My entitled, stuck-up manager demands that I drop everything that I'm doing just to help out with food that we're delivering to a table. And after dealing with this awful lady for so long, I decided to maliciously comply and get back at this awful manager in the best way possible. Here's what happened. So I want to start off by saying that yes, I know I should have been fired for this, and I do not recommend doing this in any service industry job. This happened several years ago while I was working as a waitress at a chain restaurant. There was this insane manager whom I had to work with on several occasions. She was young and thought she knew everything. She was quite trashy and was sleeping with one of the higher ups who was married, whose wife also worked at the same restaurant. But that's a different story for another day. This manager, let's call her Mindy, that's not her real name, was always on my butt about everything. I was one of the few shift leads who knew what they were doing, knew how to make the restaurant money, and had many customers write great reviews and say wonderful things about me. I knew how to do my job and I knew how to do it well. Mindy always singled me out for things when things weren't even my fault. And I would always just take it because it wasn't worth my energy fighting about it. She was the only person in the whole restaurant that I did not get along with. And in contrast, I had a great rapport with the bartenders, servers, cooks, back of house staff, and other managers. One day, I came in to start my shift but was quickly pulled into the manager's office by a different manager. He wanted to bring it to my attention that Mindy had stated on my past shift shift that I was on my phone and not working hard. And this was not true. I never carried my phone on me because it was a distraction and I didn't have any room in my aprons. Also, my jeans don't have any pockets. And even with all that in mind, honestly, I just didn't want to have it on me. I mentioned this to the manager and he gave me the benefit of the doubt, but said he was going to keep an eye on me as cell phone use has been a major problem with several of the servers and bartenders in the past few months. One shift a few days after that was very busy. I had a full section that was sat with a party of 12 who all ordered beverages from the bar with water. I grab a tray, fill up the water, and hand the glassware to the service bar in the kitchen area. Once all the drinks were on the tray, I slowly started to lift it to get it situated as it was heavy. Well, Mindy decided that this was the best time to yell at me and tell me that she needed me to run the food that was up at the expo line, which by the way is where she was standing and expediting the food. I took a second to look over to the other two servers who were leaning against the wall, you know, the same ones who were much closer to her, who were also on their phones doing nothing. I said to her, well, I'm a little busy, can somebody else help? Well, when I said that, she snapped back at me and said to me, I told you to do it, so you need to do it right now. At that moment, I honestly didn't even care anymore. So I looked her dead in the eyes, I smiled, and I said to her, okay, and I literally dropped the tray of drinks I was holding on the ground. I walked over the broken glass, crunching the cups under my feet, grabbed the plates of food, and asked her where they were going while keeping the smile on my face. The look of shock on her face, the phone dwelling server's faces, and the cook's faces were quite priceless. Once I delivered the food, I went to my party of 12 and apologized to them and told them I dropped the tray of their drinks and I would be right back with a new one, still with that same smile on my face. Once my shift was over, Mindy pulled me into the office and explained that what I did today was not okay and she was going to write me up for it. So I had to sign a document stating I understood understood why I was being written up and I refused to sign it before speaking with other management. There was much more discussion in this conversation, but I can honestly narrow it all down. She said I would be fired if I didn't sign the write-up document at that exact moment. But you know what? I still refused and said I would like to speak with the general manager about it tomorrow morning on my next shift. The next morning, I explained to the general manager what had happened and stated that I was working while others were on their phones, but Mindy singled me out specifically. I also asked him to check the cameras to see the incident taking place. And might I say, it was so satisfying to physically see myself drop everything. After lots of discussion, the general manager said there's no problem here, ripped up the write-up, and told me to continue being the hard worker that I am. And I never had to work with Mindy ever again. Wow, the original poster seriously made a gamble on that one. They took the phrase, drop everything that you're doing and help me out, way too seriously. Like they dropped a full tray full of drinks all over the floor. I can only imagine what kind of mess that made and how long that must have taken just to clean it up. And also, I honestly can't stand people like Mindy, managers who are just singling people out all because they want to, while also making up lies about stuff that they're doing, even though they're not doing that in the first place. Like, it's very clear that Mindy had it out for the original poster, and she was just trying to get her fired, while also basically ignoring all the other servers who are blatantly on their phone doing absolutely nothing. So either way, good for you for getting back at this 
this lady and basically ensuring that you will never have to deal with her ever again. And I completely agree with what the original poster said. They should have been fired for this. This is seriously so insane. But at the end of the day, you got away with it and this Mindy lady never bothered you ever again. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My job demands that I don't give out any Christmas presents to any of the teenagers that we were helping. So I decided to maliciously comply and expose the manager who tried to make that awful decision. And I've never felt more satisfied to eventually see her get fired. Here's what happened. Okay, so this situation is a few years old now and the place I used to work at has closed down. So I feel comfortable enough to try and share it. I used to work at a place where teenagers lived full time when they had behavior difficulties, usually related to substance use, if you know what I mean, as well as truancy. They lived there full time and the program was staffed a full 24 hours a day. They required supervision at all times except for in the bathroom and at night. Supervision was also reduced down to 15 minute checks all night long. I worked third shift at this job and I worked there for almost five years at the time of this incident. Now here's the thing. I did not love my management but I really did love my kids and for the entire five and a half years I worked there during the Christmas holidays the third shift staff would do the seven nights of Christmas wherein we would put little presents outside their doors on the week leading up to Christmas. They were pretty generic things like body washes, lotions, or soft fuzzy blankets, stuff along those lines. But it made them feel a little better about being stuck in an institution during the holidays. This place also had statuses that could be placed upon people, and for ease of understanding, I'll call those statuses bad, good, and perfect. If someone was on the perfect status, they would have a later bedtime. Certain unwanted behaviors could knock them down from the perfect status to a good one, or from a good one all the way down to a bad one. This place insisted up, down, and sideways that the bad status was not a punishment, that the kids' behaviors had earned the bad status, and as soon as they showed remorse and that they'd learned from their mistake, they could earn back good status. This will be important later on. Well, during the year 2018, we got a new manager. We'll call them Sammy. Sammy is not their real name. A few days before the Christmas holiday, Sammy calls me up when I get to work and says to me, kids who earn bad status don't get their seven days of Christmas present until they earn a different status outside of bad. And when Sammy said that, I super disagreed. She insisted it was because we're rewarding bad behavior. I insisted, though, that bad status wasn't a punishment and that withholding presents was a punishment. So I thought to myself, which is it, Sammy? Which one is more important here? She got short with me and ended up hanging up on me. So I wrote out my end of night logs by throwing her under the bus and I stated openly on government legal emails that Miss Sammy had stated that the ladies who had earned bad status were not allowed to get the seven days of Christmas presents that their peers were getting. And as this was a punishment, we needed to change the legislation on the rule set. Since bad status says on its paperwork that it's not a punishment, it's a consequence earned by behaviors, we should be changing it to say that these behaviors are bad and they earned a punishment status. Well, as a result, I got several emails in quick succession that I should definitely give them the presents. And then, as a result, I got written up. Now, fast forward and Sammy did get fired, even though it wasn't from this incident, but from several others later down the line. Eventually, I ended up quitting as well. And now, I obsessively crawl over our employment page at my current job just to make sure that she doesn't work here either. Wow, talk about the Grinch who stole Christmas. Sammy sounds like an absolutely horrible person. Here you are working at a facility to try and help troubled teenagers. You're doing something good every year by giving out presents and helping these kids move along with their lives. And then Sammy comes in and says, no more presents for bad status kids. Like seriously, Sammy, you're the one with the problem. And I can definitely see why you got fired. So good for the original poster for exposing this piece of garbage. Because if it was up to Sammy, none of those kids would have gotten a present. And that truly would have ruined somebody's Christmas. Am I the jerk for asking my boyfriend's family to stop inviting me over for dinner? Here's what happened. So my boyfriend's family recently invited me for dinner to celebrate my birthday. They are notorious for eating exactly at 5 o'clock p.m., but since I work in the office occasionally, and it's a one-hour commute, they will sometimes offer to push dinner so we can eat after I finish commuting back to town. The last three times they have invited me to dinner, however, I have arrived to find everyone already eating, and most recently, everyone was clearing their plate by the time I walk through the door. For some context, my train arrives at my hometown at about 6.13 in the evening, and I will be through their door by 6.20 p.m. If I go over after working from home, I'll be there usually at about 5.15 p.m. 
at the latest. I come from a family where no one touches their food without everyone at the table and ready to eat, let alone a guest who's still coming over. Since I was raised this way, I find what my boyfriend's family is doing completely disrespectful and it hurts my feelings that they offer to push dinner and then eat without me anyways, not to mention the uncomfortableness of also having to eat alone at the table. I've brought this up to my boyfriend and he says it's not a big deal and that members of his family need to eat at a certain time because of blood sugar issues. Also, just to note, my boyfriend has stopped eating before I get there since I told him that it bothers me, but his family has not. Recently, when they offered to have me for dinner for my birthday after an office day, I politely suggested to my boyfriend that they eat without me and I will come after I get home for cake or something like that. My boyfriend said he wouldn't be suggesting that to his parents because it's rude and ungrateful and that I can deal with everyone eating before me for one day. My stance is pretty firm that if you invite someone for dinner, you shouldn't eat without them. So I've asked him going forward to stop inviting me to family dinners. I don't feel like I'm overreacting or over asking, but my boyfriend is pretty floored that I would suggest that. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk in this situation, but also you do know you can say no to coming over for dinner, right? You could just say something like, oh, thank you for the invite, but I've had a busy day and I won't be available to eat dinner with the family. You could also explain to them that your work schedule and commuting back and forth is really hard on you, so you're only available for dinners on the weekends. Like, that literally could solve all of your problems. I think making, like, a blanket statement of, like, okay, just don't invite me for any dinners ever. Like, that seems like an overreaction in my opinion, and I can understand kind of where your boyfriend's coming from. So I don't think you're the jerk in this situation, but also this situation is kind of weird, because you're an adult, and you absolutely can say no if you don't want to show up. Would I be the jerk if I hire a nanny to help with childcare around the house after my wife got a new job, thus preventing her from being around the house to help out. Here's what happened. My wife and I have been married for 12 years and we have three kids. We both work full time with me being the primary breadwinner and earning around three times what she does. About four months ago, she was offered a promotion at her job. It wasn't a big step up in pay, but would be a lot more responsibility as well as being on call three to four nights a week. When she told me about it, she was really excited and acting like it was a huge opportunity to advance her career. And I was happy for her, but I told her I had some concerns about how often she would be out of the house in the evenings or how we would have to alter our schedules and routines due to her being on call. She assured me that being on call wasn't an issue and reiterated that she would be compensated for that time even if she wasn't actually called in. I told her that ultimately it was her decision but I feel like we live comfortably already and the little extra money wouldn't be worth the hassle it would cause in our lives. She ended up taking the job and wouldn't you know it, she ended up being called in about 50% of the time. This resulted in us having to find alternate rides for our kids to do activities, canceling plans, her leaving in the middle of dinner or family time, etc. I also had to pick up a lot of slack in terms of household duties and childcare. We have never fought as much as we have been since she took this promotion, but she's convinced it's a stepping stone to something better. Now, I floated the idea of hiring a nanny for the nights that she's on call so that I have help in the inevitable situation where she gets called in again. Simply having another person to watch the kids if I need to take one of them to an activity or a play date or to be able to make dinner easier or get other chores done. But she shot the idea down immediately and told me that me picking up her slack is not that big of a deal and I should be able to handle it. After a three-week stretch of her being called in three nights a week, I told her that I was going to start looking into nannies with or without her agreement. I told her the only way I would reconsider is if she tries to get her old job back or look for a different one because her promotion is not working for me or the kids. Now, when I said this, she did not take this well. She accused me of being a lazy person and trying to buy my way out of being a father. She also said that the cost of a nanny would offset any extra money her promotion is bringing in. When I told her it would actually cost more than that, she got incredibly upset. She has no time frame for how long she will be in this position at work and apparently has no care for my feelings on this. I'm tempted to just hire a nanny anyways because this is not sustainable for me. I think this promotion has blinded her on how negatively it has impacted the rest of our family and I refuse to just suck it up any longer. Now, I do want to continue by clarifying a few things. My wife did not do 100% of the child care or all of the chores before her promotion. Before her promotion, we would divide and conquer and split child care and chores as evenly as possible. Both of us were 100% comfortable with how we had these things divided between us. It's not like I was coming home and doing 
absolutely nothing. We split responsibilities equally between the two of us. But now those responsibilities have fallen on my shoulders, and I'm honestly starting to get overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. Yeah, I can kind of see where you're coming from here. It seems like the original poster was being involved already as a father, and they weren't being lazy or standoffish when it comes to being involved with their children. So I completely understand where they're coming from, because right now, three days out of the week, the original poster is basically being a solo parent, and that can really be frustrating and probably really hard to deal with. On the other side of this, your wife is advancing her career. Like, this really is a good thing for both of you. Even if the money isn't making a dent in your wallet or anything like that, and even though it's going to be a small amount compared to what you make, this is still a really good thing for your wife, and she clearly really enjoys it. So it kind of makes me wonder if there is any kind of situation where this might be able to work out. I will say, though, I don't really like the way you're talking about your wife and her new job. Like, it really doesn't seem like you're being supportive of the job that she's doing. So no, I don't personally think you're the jerk. I think maybe you need to find some kind of middle ground with your wife, because this promotion is clearly very important to her. And I think it would be a good idea to step in and support your wife. Am I the jerk for kicking out my sister's friend from my house after she gave my child baby melatonin? Here's what happened. Okay, to start things out, my husband and I took in one of my little sister's friends, and we're going to call her Sam. Sam is not her real name. She's 18 years old, and Sam has been with us for almost a full year, and we've been taking care of her the entire time. We also have two small children who live in our house as well. We have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. We occasionally ask Sam to watch the kids for us when we have errands to run or when we have a date night or something like that. Well, she graduated high school in May and did not have a job over the summer, nor paid any sort of bills. So we didn't think we were asking anything huge considering we pay everything. We're paying for her cell phone, her shoes, clothing, anything that she needs. We just finally trusted Sam enough to watch the kids overnight so we could go out of town to celebrate our anniversary. Everything went fine and we returned home with no issues. Well, at least that's what we thought. Today, I had some errands to run while my husband went to work, so I asked Sam to watch the kids for about two hours last evening. Sam is in no way a morning person and it's very apparent. For reference, this is at 7.12 in the morning and the kids had just gotten up at 6.30. This morning when she got up to watch the kids, she instantly fell back asleep on the couch. My husband and I had to wake her up before we left. We have a car in the shop currently, so I was dropping him off and then doing my errands. I had to use the restroom after dropping him off, so I stopped back home to find my house door unlocked and the house alarm not even turned on. Sam was in the room with the kids sleeping, and this was at 7.50 in the morning. She had no idea I ever entered the house, and I was angry but got back into my car to do what I needed to do. While I was driving, I had a nagging feeling to check the living room camera from after the time we left, and what I could see on the camera absolutely horrified me as a mom. Not even 10 minutes after we left, Sam goes to the spot we keep the children's melatonin and proceeds to plop one into my child's mouth. I saw red and sent the video to my husband to confirm what I saw, and he agreed. I then also sent it to my mom to triple check it. So I fly home and I go inside to confront her. She lies and lies to me until she tells me that she actually did do it. I told her that she needed to be out of my house today by 1 o'clock and she had a total meltdown. She gave me every reason in the book as to why she did it and freaked out that she has nowhere to go. I told a few people because I'm so upset and I'm crying. I had some people who agreed with me but some saying I shouldn't kick her out since there's nowhere else that she could go. It's honestly making me feel horrible. So am I the jerk for kicking her out of my house? What should I do? Okay, so first off, this is really a tough situation. On one hand, it does seem like there's some sketchy things going on. Like from the outside looking in, it does kind of seem like Sam did this in a way that was really not okay. So I can understand why the original poster would be so upset. But I'm sure Sam would probably say that she thought she was doing the right thing because that melatonin was specifically for the child. Like I'm willing to bet that she didn't do this in a malicious way or in any kind of way that would be inappropriate. Maybe she just didn't know the right timing to give it to the child or something like that. And sure, I totally understand that she was super tired and this happened early in the morning. I understand that's part of the reason why this does look so sketchy. It almost looks purposeful in a way. But I'm really not convinced that suddenly Sam is deciding, oh yeah, this is what we're going to do so I can get some sleep. Like she's been living with the original poster for a while. I don't think out of nowhere she would do this without some kind of reasoning behind it. So maybe Sam thought she was doing the right thing here. And based on the evidence that we have in front of us, I'm not totally convinced that Sam did this in a malicious way. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications.
notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.